republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Mr. Welch, will you take attendance? Uh, all members are, all school board members are present. Thank you. All right, is there any new business to bring before the board? If there is no new business to bring before the board, I would ask for a motion to approve the agenda before you. So moved, Mr. Emanuel. Second, Lori Miller Beach. I have a motion by Mr. Emanuel and a second by Ms. Miller Beach. And I will do a roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Romans? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7 0. Next on the agenda is consent agenda 6A through 6D. Is there any one item on the consent agenda that a board member would like removed and discussed separately? If not, I would seek a motion for the approval of consent agenda 6A through 6D. So moved. So mo oh. I have a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Ravenhorst and a second by Ms. O'Neill. And I will do a roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Romans? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7 0. Next on the agenda is to review the Sandlot project. And in the boardroom, Today we have Mr. Mose and Mr. Leibel from Kraus Anderson. What did you say? Oh, okay. <laughs> My apologies. Um, so we are going to have a presentation. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh Superintendent Salters, if you would please put the presentation on the screen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so again, uh, I'm Matt Mose. I'm the president of uh, the Stuartville Racine Diamond Club. We're a booster club for the softball and baseball program. Um, and I also am one of the consultants on the project as well with the uh, Bolton and the Civil Engineering Consultant. And with me, I've got Nick Lammer, uh, Vice President here locally uh, in the Rochester office for Carl Sanders. Uh, next slide, please. And just a quick recap before I get into the project team. Uh, for those of you that are new to the project or just a, a refresher, is that uh, the, the softball and baseball fields do not have fully operational bathrooms. Uh, porter potties, and we just experienced a, a porter potty mishap earlier uh, a couple weeks ago in the hot weather and uh, the use and all that kind of stuff. So we're looking to get away from that and build some bathrooms. Uh, we also had a concession stand at one point that essentially just fell apart, um, and, and we've been using a Pepsi trailer for a period of time, and, and we like to have our own concession stand, and we're a little short on storage, and so we're looking to find a combination package where we can get all three of those into one facility. And, and bring us uh, into today's day and age with a lot of the other facilities we go to. Uh, they've got concessions, they've got operating bathrooms, and, and we've had a lot of really nice work done to our fields too. They continue to, to 
bolster the area, I guess, the, the, the recreation aspect uh, and, and the, the fan uh, element to it, the players element, the players, everybody in um, And so that's what that's what we're talking about, and that's what we're looking for to this project. So our, uh, our partners, our design partners that show up on the slide are, we've got Mickey Gill with Carl Sanderson, myself as the civil engineering consultant, and then Von Peterson, who could not be with us tonight, he's with TSP Architects out of Rochester. Uh, between the three of us, uh, I, I have to gush a little bit. I'm, I really enjoyed working with our design team just across the consultants, getting to know each other a little bit better. Uh, Nick and I both have skin in the game. We're both, we have a very vested interest in this project with kids in the program. My, my son is actually out of the program, but you know, we're, we're still involved um, in the project and, and Nick's got boys in the program. And Vaughn with uh, TSP has acted like he's got kids in the district. And, and, uh, just uh, just openly between the three consultants and their pro bono in-kind donation, um, without those donations, this project never would have got off the ground. And so I'm, I'm very thankful to Bolton and Meg for allowing me to do what I'm doing here and, and to, to provide our services at no charge. And for Nick and, and Carl Sanderson of TSP Architects, I wanted to give everybody a little pat on the back there. And, and not to be, uh, not to end there, I mean, I, I need to extend this work whole project team, which includes district staff, the superintendent selfers, her guidance, her leadership has really been uh, outstanding, has helped to get us to where we are today. Dan Schroeder in the business office, as well as Tim Malone too, as the uh, as the athletic director, working through the, the project, the ins and outs, how can we do this, what does this mean, where do we go? Um, I'm super happy, super impressed with how it all came together. So pat on the back to everybody, please. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, just to recap, I've got a couple of renderings here this slide, and then if you go to the next slide, please, to just give everybody a, a refresher again on what we see, the vision of how this building might look. Paint colors will change, the actual exterior logos, those kinds of things. I, although I think it would be super cool to have the tiger eyes on the north side <laughs> of the building. It may not come to fruition, but if it does, cool. If it doesn't, I'm, I'm sure we'll find something uh, you know, to really spruce it up and make it look good. Next slide, please. This is a little bit tougher um, to see just on the, uh, if, if I had a bigger map, it would um, look a little bit better, but this is just an overall layout of, of the project. And so on the east side of the school, there is a lift station and there's where all the sanitary sewer flows to and it's pumped back up out by the pool, not in the pool, out by the pool, <laughs> but, um, into the city's gravity sanitary system. And what we're going to do is we're going to directional drill a two-inch line from that point and across kind of going in a, a kitty corner kind of a northeast southwest orientation to our site where that storage shed is between the softball fields and the baseball field. Um, and the purpose for that is that well, there's going to be a small lift station at the concession stand or at the sand lot, which uh, the sewage will flow or go into that and then pump up into the school's lift station, and then from there it will pump out into the city's uh, system. Uh, we ran some calculations and took a look at, will we negatively impact the school system? And we feel very confident that won't be the case. We're gonna be operating really in the off season and off hours at the school will. So overall, the, uh, the impact with flow, are we gonna inundate or overwhelm the school's lift station? Now? We've talked it through internally with our engineers with the city. The city has been a, a close partner in all this too, and I, I should backtrack a bit and, and give a shout out to the city. The city's public works has been very helpful with this project, and the city staff right now too are, are doing a great job there. The city's actually providing all the permitting and reviews locally for nothing. That's their contribution to the project. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure we get them on our wall of fame as well. Then. Sure. So uh, next slide, please. This is uh, just a clip from our plan set, and it's uh, from our site plan. And it shows where the building is going to be located. And again, it's a, if it's a little bit more zoomed in, it'll be easier to see with, the, with respect to getting it on the slide. Um, we're, we've got the red lines are the existing power lines that run through the area, going to the different lights and, and so on. We, we're gonna have to work around those things, the things that we called out in our plan set. 
our electrician will need to help us with to reorganize that. But our building is going to be um, a little bit south of that storage shed and a little bit west of where there's like a little uh, blacktop bump out from the blacktop trail that goes through there. Right in that general area is where the building is going to go. Next slide, please. This is the fun slide here. Um, so we've got, if anybody's been down there recently, we've got a great big sign that Carl Sanderson donated and put up that uh, indicates uh, different levels of contributions and, and individuals or entities that have donated. And as time went on and more donations came in, we worked with CNM and they helped to get us a sticker so we could just put it right onto the board to, to update it as we went. And so as of last Thursday, or the 24th of June, we had obligations of funds over $285,000. And that's the, from the list there. That's from um, a very generous obligation from the district. Uh, and then on top of that, businesses, alumni, individual donors, grants, uh, donations through registration. Um, we even looked under couch cushions to see what money we could find for the project. And, and right as of now, it's $285,000. There, there, we are still fundraising. There are still elements to the project that uh, we're working to cover that things that we can do over the winter and have ready for next spring. I don't, uh, I got to be careful about saying any more because the next couple slides are next and I don't want to take the wind out of the sail. Uh, next slide, please. Yep. Oh, <laughs> I'm not used to math stopping time. <laughs> um, so what you see here, this is a list of the recommendations for award. Uh, there's an official award letter that should come through your packet. And so what we're looking for there is uh, in our services. So like Matt mentioned, we donated our pre-construction services, which is the part of working through the original design assist and the budgeting and then the bidding, pulling all that together and then pulling it together like this, kind of like construction manager services. So we've donated that as well, which is why we don't technically have a contract. But what we're doing is treating it the same way where we put all this up a bid, pull everything in, and then make a recommendation for what we get awarded and contract out through the district and also with name. And so what this list is here is this is a list of all of the scopes and the bid amounts, the in China amounts, and giving you that total growth bid amount as well as the contract. So we're looking to get the approval for the district to proceed with contracting with this scope. And uh, if you, like Matt mentioned, the budget here is 285000 that they're working toward the funding. And that's the same budget that we're working within as well. Um, we're looking at 285000 and have some contingency of that. I've got to stop you for a second. Miraculously, Carl Sanderson was able to work their magic discussions with contractors. We solicited local contractors and in some areas we were a little shy on um, contractors for certain scopes. And, and Nick's expertise and his team's expertise came in and expanded that that uh let's say contact list. And then Carl Sanderson worked diligently on the contact list talking to contractors, talking about the in-kind components and uh through again through their management they were able to help find a project that met the dollar amount that we have, and it turned out actually, maybe a little coincidentally, but but a little bit corrected is that the, the budget that we currently got. I'm gushing, big time gushing here, but I'm so excited <laughs> and so proud of what we've yeah. been able to do and what what next team has been able. To do. So, okay, I'm done. Your turn. <laughs> well, as you know, the construction industry, everything is very volatile. Prices change a lot. It has a lot of wood trusses and shooting and things like that. We budgeted this project a long time ago and so that's a very true statement that took a lot to get this to that and it's part of seeking out those bids and the contractors as well as people that have donated in time and different things to allow it to get to that spot and you mentioned tyler tyler is the guy that had to really go up and please because this number was well over three hundred thousand when the numbers first started coming together and so i didn't tell him that right away because i got my own heart attack and so <laughs> really had to figure that out and like I said it wasn't an easy deal but we're able to pull everything together so the scope in front of you is that complete scope the, these numbers here won't add up total to 285,000 because a couple of the miscellaneous things that 
still be addressed, like over some dumpsters we might need to take care of. Um, they might also get donated. Uh, just some landscape patching and stuff that will have to happen to the west after the work is done. So there's little things in there. So if you were to add every number up, it's not going to quite total up to that. But those other things will come through separately. And so what the group's looking for is to get the nod tonight to proceed with these. And there's three of them. Tyler's on vacation this week, but there's three of them that he wanted to get awarded right away. So he's got that information prepared. I've actually sent it to Dan already. Um, in preparation for approval. So we have a uh, amount for DBS, which is the lumber package, and then there's also the um, Rochester plumbing and heating for the plumbing to get those things going, as well as Hildebrand, because that's the first people that will be on site when this comes together. So uh, those are the three that we want to get going right away this week, and then the rest will follow up with Dan on next week. What's happening today? Not that that matters to this group, just have done. So our, our timing right now as it sits is that we've always had the the mental thought that we're going to wait until softball is completely finished we're going to wait until baseball is completely finished that includes the sharks as well because they use that area and there's some thoughts and, and talk about well what about football and everything follows right behind it baseball and softball use the area you know very intimately in and around the construction site football is going to be a little bit distance away but we do have a safety fence included as part of the project, go around the project to, you know, for safety reasons. And so that there will be potential for crossover at some point. We can't, we can't avoid it. We can't build it in the winter. So uh, we, we tried to do the best we could with timing. And so right now our thought would be timing. And it's going to be dependent upon um, when contractors can, can be there and, and mix a little work for some of those things and, and the pre-order is what it's also referring to getting some of the materials that are going to take a long time you know, uh, like the trusses and the Rochester uh, plumbing heating that's an order of the station get all those things in stock so that's uh, what we're hoping for maybe mid-august somewhere in that that ballpark who's a fun um, maybe a little <laughs> earlier if time allows but uh, uh, then we don't have a specific date set but we, we've got a, a, a time frame again for a groundbreaking, Correct. essentially. Yeah. Thanks for starting on site, yes. And we'll get started as soon as we can with the contractors. What we'll be waiting on is those wood trusses. Yeah. They're about 14 to 16 weeks out. So that will just a little ways, but if we can get everything else done and be ready to wait for that, then it, it is what it is. Yeah. So the more we can get done, the better, and be ready to wait for that. I'm glad you brought up the groundbreaking, because that, that is something that's always been in our minds. Is when this project starts, we want to have, we want to make a big deal out get a picture and then we'd invite Mark even though he's a Green Bay Packer fan. <laughs> but we, we would really we'd like to uh, to again make a big deal out of it. This is something and tech as I we're we my family is a transplant in Stewartville and it sounds like uh, we came in about two thousand twelve and it sounds like this idea for this project predates us even moving to the area. So um, it's a, it's a big deal that we've been able to do for sure that it takes recognized over Next slide, please. So these are the next steps. Uh, we just talked a little bit about the, the contract procurement on uh, material ordering. Um, we've uh, submitted our plans and our permit, our permits to the uh, locally, and then also goes to the county and to the state. So we need to finalize the permitting. Um, and it's, we're, we're right on track with permitting on, on where a project would be right about now. Um, and then continue planning for uh, our recognition plaques. Uh, now that we have a contractor list, we've got a, a solid donation list. Now that we have a contractor list, we can add to um, contractors to the different uh, levels of our donations that we can get. And I've already talked to a, a place that is going to help us with all of this and start it preliminarily pricing something so trying to figure out what's going to go where how it's going to look and how big plaques are going to be that's still working for us um, we also have a little bit of a kitchen equipment that we need to purchase um, a pepsi um, who we are contracting with for the, the trailer or our concession trailer right now is going to donate a beverage pool to us they're going to donate a, a board you can put up you know just you know your costs or whatever i forget what they call it but um, and and maybe more. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly. And then we also have a donation of a three-bay stainless steel sink um, from one of the contractors. And so there's 
we're, we're closing the gap on what we need in the kitchen, but there's still a couple other things. So that's why, therefore, the fundraising would continue down through the winter to procure some of those items. And then ideally, it would all come together in the spring. We'd have the, the wall of fame up, and we'd have the kitchen ready to go and for opening day. Next slide, please. I would love to spend the next hour with you talking about the project and, and just totally brain dumping everything we went through, but that's, I'll, I'll call that the nutshell version, and you know, about two years worth of planning uh, to get to this point. And I, I, we've been in front of the board a couple times now, and, and I really am appreciative of the, of the board's support as well for the project. And, uh, I think right now is probably a good time for me to back down and just ask if anybody's got questions. I'll go for one. Um, so bear with me. I'm really, I'm really kind of dumb when it comes to a lot of the engineering and planning and all that stuff. But I'm looking at that uh, your directional floor. Mm -hmm. Is I know that there's a sign that says SHS wetlands. Is that a real wetland? Is that like a technical wetland? Is that going to cause any issues? It will not cause an issue. So it is uh, by default. I would say. It's a wetland. I would call it a wetland without you know, doing the formal review. Mm -hmm. um, however, the fact that we're directionally so drilling, right. yeah. yep. Okay. So we don't have there are no negative impacts. Right. Yeah. I did check that out with our. With our yeah, I was just. I mean, I'm like you're going under it, so it probably wouldn't be. But yeah, I know all wetlands can be. It's, yep. It's, it's a good question. Really yeah. difficult to navigate. Good question. Any of the board members that are remote, do you have any questions? Chair Wartman, I'll just jump in. Um, I think yeah. that uh, Matt and Nick did a really nice job of giving accolades to the district, but truth be told, um, they have done the, the largest majority of the legwork on this. Um, the district is very, very supportive of the project, and we're excited about the, the possibilities that this presents to for our, our community and our athletes. Um, but they have just been going at this uh, full bore and we've been more of a resource or a sounding board for them. But really they have taken the bulk of the work and uh, put it really to good use and their efforts have been amazing in moving this forward. So congratulations to the Diamond Club and the leadership that um, these, these individuals have shown in getting this off the ground and getting it really to the point where we're looking at groundbreaking. And so it's very, very phenomenal. We're just so excited. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Selfers. Um, I just wanted to check in with the two of you. We have on the agenda to review the project. Um, you had mentioned to uh, give a nod. Are you looking for an approval instead of the review of the project? Because yeah. you had talked about um, the three bids for Dan. So the, the school district will be the, the owner uh, on, for the agreement to the contracts. Um, the Diamond Club cannot. And so our arrangement, the Diamond Club's arrangement with the district and working with Superintendent Selfers and Dan is that we will transfer our funds over to the school. The school will make payments to the contract. And so ultimately what we need in, in, in construction terms than not is we're looking for approvals tonight. Okay. Um, Perfect. In, in order to award the contracts. Uh, and there will be individual contracts with, with the different. Uh, so if there's not one contract, there will be several. Um, and we would ask that for approval to move forward. So Cross Anderson can start with the working with the contractors to get the materials ordered. Okay. If the superintendent itself, or please stop me if I'm speaking of internal, but would you be in agreement with us that that's indeed what we're looking for, correct? It is, and I um, have shared uh, motion language with Chair Wartman and Secretary Welch. And so if you want to go ahead and move forward with that, it would be the recommendation of the district that this is uh, approved. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the Sandlot project as presented. Ms. O'Neill. I'll second. I have a motion by Ms. O'Neill and a second by Mr. Romans.
Mr. Welch, you, I'm on it. I'm, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm gonna do a roll call vote, starting with Mr. Emmanuel. Aye. Miss Miller Beach. Aye. Miss O'Neill. Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst. Aye. Mr. Romans. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries seven zero. Congratulations. Thank you guys for doing that. Thank you for the community, for you guys for putting your time and your effort. It's cool to see people get involved and do that kind of stuff. Great to see it come together. Long time ago, it sounds like. Yeah. Get your PVC working. Great. That's what I did. I can get it. Nick, apologies for mispronouncing your last name. <laughs> Thank you both for your time tonight. You too. All right. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve the 21-22 K-3 literacy plan. This is an annual task that we have to um, uh, approve each year. Uh, Principal McEnroy is the one who writes the plan in consultation with Katie Morlock and Holly Clark. Um, so the plan, there are a few changes made, but nothing significant from the previous year. And so it is uh, recommended that it be approved. All right. And did anyone have any questions on the literacy plan? I'll make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 K-3 literacy plan. We'll second that motion. All right. I have a motion by Mr. Welch, a second by Mr. Ravenhorst. And I will do a roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Miss Miller Beach? Aye. Miss O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Romans? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7 0. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve the parent student handbooks for the 21 22 school year. Again, this is an annual task that we have uh, that we take care of each summer. Um, the handbook revisions were minimal. We had done a comprehensive review of our handbooks in earlier years. And so um, each of the changes were noted for you with strike through language and or bold faced language indicating additions. Um, it is recommended that all of the revisions be uh, approved by the board. I just have one question on the the high school handbook about the sports and how it's written out for a failing grade to not be able to um, play or not be, able to be a part of that rec or activity, no matter if it's sports or whatever your mm -hmm. extra activity is. Do we do anything prior to the failing grade? Like, is there notification to the coach that, I mean, is that written anywhere about like, they have so many warnings leading up to that or is it, a kid just gets slapped with the F and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I didn't know this was coming kind of stuff. Like, is there help that we're giving those kids prior to telling them they can't be in part of their extracurricular activity? Yes, there is. So um, each team handles it um, in their own. Their, each coach has the autonomy to determine how they're going to approach this. Um, but failure prevention is part of that. Um, and each coach is expected to communicate to their athletes and their parents how they work with students who might be in danger of failing. Uh, we do a mid-quarter grade, and at the mid-quarter, that is notification that you might be in danger of not earning a passing grade in that class, and that would be the point where then the coach can set up study teams or can uh, work with a teacher to find out exactly what needs to happen in order for that student to pass that class. Um, so failure prevention is part of that. Um, we typically have very, very few students who end up being in this situation where they are ineligible due to grades. Um, being members of the Minnesota State High School League, we have to have 
on our uh, competition teams, all students making progress to graduation. And so in order to make progress to graduation, failures are something that would make you ineligible. I just remember being way bigger than that. I always thought it was like the DUC kind of stuff that you had to be above a certain level. So I just, I just want to make sure that I didn't know if they were supposed to be in writing there and that handbook part about the steps they take for the kids and what they help for the kids prior to the family grade or whatever. But it, it would be in each coach's handbook for their sport. Okay. Good question. Any other questions? All right. If there are no other questions or discussion, I would seek a motion for the approval of the revisions to the parent student handbooks. So moved, Mr. Emanuel. I have a motion by Mr. Emanuel, second by Mr. Romans. Yes, <laughs> All right. And I'll do a roll call vote, starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach. Aye. Ms. O'Neill. Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst. Aye. Mr. Romans. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Aye for myself. The motion carries 7-0. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve the activities and athletics handbook for the 21-22 school year. These revisions were um, a part of a process that included Mr. Hughes, Mr. Malone, and um, the high school principal, as well as input from various coaching staff. So it is recommended that these be approved as well. Any questions on the activities and athletics handbook revision? Okay. I would seek a motion for the revisions. So move, Ms. O'Neill. I have a motion by Ms. O'Neill. I'll second. I have a second by Mr. Welch. And I'll do roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach. Aye. Ms. O'Neill. Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst. Aye. Mr. Romans. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7-0. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve the staff handbook for the 21-22 school year. In this one, the only revision is relative to the next item, which is the sub pay rates. Um, we just want to update the sub pay rates in the staff handbook that um, would be reflective of the sub pay rates that are going to be approved by the board. So should we do the sub pay rates first? You certainly could. They're connected okay. to each other. Okay, so let's go to uh, 10A, consider and approve the sub pay rate recommendation for the 21-22 uh, school year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back to the, the, the handbook. So in the sub pay rates, um, we are at $110 a day for teacher subs. We're looking to put that to 120. Uh, the permanent teacher subs, which is the sub that we hire is permanently. Uh, we hired one for uh, K-5 and one for grade six through 12 this year. They worked every day. And so um, because they are um, gonna be considered to be permanent subs, they would be paid at a higher rate. This past year, they were paid at 160 a day and that was primarily due to the COVID-19 and the perceived risk of working in a school. We're gonna be able to roll that back to 130 next year. 
And then the para subs were at $11 an hour, and we are looking to put that to $13.50. And then finally, the custodial and maintenance, um, the seasonal and the subs for that would go from $12 to $15 an hour. Any questions? The 120 a day for the subs that, I mean, is are we even competitive yet? Or is that still kind of towards the bottom? No, wow. we are very, at 120, we'd be very competitive. Um, some are as low as 105. Um, we are competing with Rochester. They're a bit higher at 135, but this would put us um, at the next highest level at the 120. Linda, mm -hmm. are you still doing that through Teachers on Call? Yes. Is there is there something there about if you work so many hours a month that you get benefits or something? I don't know what Teachers on Call offers. Oh, okay, because that's what I was wondering about. Then it starts getting to a, a reasonable amount where they could actually do that as a as a job. I don't know what they offer for benefits. Um, that would be because the, we're vendoring that out. Um, that's not information that I would have. Okay. And then is is there any concern with anybody that the paras are making less than what a sub would make? That makes that ha I have some concerns about that. Um, the paras on the new pay scale will not make less than a sub. Okay, that's what I care about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. If there are no other questions, I would seek a motion for the approval for the sub pay rate recommendations for the 21-22 school year. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Welch. I'll second, Ms. O'Neill. I have a second by Ms. O'Neill. Belinda, can I ask one more question? Yes. Yep. So with, with the custodial staff, I know we, we outsource some of those. So how many people for the $15 an hour raise would you be considering for that? It would be anybody who subs for a custodian that is that is our custodian. Okay. That is out and we have to hire a sub and the seasonal in the summer. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Thank you, Ms. Miller Beach. Any other questions? Okay. Then I will start a roll call vote, starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach. Aye. Ms. O'Neill. Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst. Aye. Mr. Romans. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. I for myself, that motion carries 7-0. So the 9C, consider and approve the staff handbook for the 21-22 school year. Rev so All right, Mr. Ravenhorst. Second, Ms. Miller Beach. All right. So I have a motion by Mr. Ravenhorst, second by Ms. Miller-Beach. Any questions about those revisions? There are no questions. I'll do a roll call vote, starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller-Beach? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Romans? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. I for myself, that motion carries 7 0. It's like we're playing hopscotch tonight. All right. All right. The next item is consider and approve the Taher uh, food service contract for the 21 22 school year. This will be the final year of the uh, contract extension. Next year, we'll be going out for bids. Um, it's recommended that this be approved. It's got the standard increase that is allowed by the Minnesota Department of Ed, Food and Nutrition Services. Um, so um, very standard, no, uh, no language changes. It's just the rate increase that would be reflected in this contract. And it is recommended for approval. Uh, 
I just have one question, please. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Do we have to do this if all of the food's going to be free again for this year? Um, we are on 10B, which is the approval of the contract. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I misread. I was thought it was all together. I apologize. Yep. yep. So we're on 10B, which is the service contract with Taher. My apologies. Are there any other questions? If there are no questions or discussion, I would seek a motion for the uh, Taher food service contract. Motion to approve, Mr. Emanuel. I have a motion by Mr. Emanuel. Second. I have a second by Mr. Ravenhorst. And I will do a roll call vote, starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach. Aye. Ms. O'Neill. Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst. Aye. Mr. Romans. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7-0. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve lunch prices for the 21-22 school year. So I can speak to this. Um, meals will be free again this coming year because we will be participating in the USDA program that provides for the free meals. Um, each district, it's an option in whether or not they want to participate in that program. And Stewartville has already committed itself to doing that so that our students can continue to eat um, at no cost to the families. Because each district gets to make an independent decision for that, um, MDE is still requiring us to set our meal prices for next year. So it seems counterintuitive, but it is a requirement. And so this is just us meeting that requirement. All right. Any questions? Okay. I, the only way I was like for 15 cents extra for sixth graders to 12th graders for lunch. I feel like K through five, like when you're like sophomore or junior, senior, I feel like you need more sustenance. Like, I don't know. For me, like, I feel like there needs to be a bigger gap there. Like, you need more food as you get bigger, right? So how can it only be 15 cents difference in the meals? Like, are we not giving our kids that are older and growing as much food? Like, what, I mean, six more tater tots? Yeah. Like, yeah, I just don't understand how like, that can only be 15 cents. Like well, we are required to follow a meal pattern. And um, the meal pattern for that age group is supposed to um, be nutritionally balanced for that age group. Um, and we're not in the in the um it's not the intent of the district to make money off of the families in the, what we charge for meals um but this it would be an appropriate price for that meal if we were going to be charging it for next year um i should also indicate that these prices are the same as they were last year so there's no increase in the price even though we're providing free meals so um it's really just a, a formality that we have to go through this process to get these approved. Belinda, I know I know you don't have a crystal ball, but then what happens if you don't increase them this year, then will you have a substantial increase for next year, do you think? Or do you think we should, you know, because typically what happens when we do this, we increase by five cents or something like that yeah. based on recommendations. What do you foresee for the future if, if the free lunch goes away? I don't have a, a crystal ball um, because we've been participating in the summer food service program and now we'll be going into the summer seamless program um, following as we move into the next school year. Those reimbursement rates are pretty healthy and our fund balance is significant. And so it wouldn't be um, responsible for us to continue to build that fund balance on the backs of our families who are paying these fees. So at this point, I don't foresee that that will become an issue. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Great questions. Anything else? Can I ask one more? I know that in the past we've had accounts that are um, are not being paid for, but I'm guessing with this year we have not seen that. Is that? Can you speak on that, or is that? We can speak on that. Um, our balance is still about a ten thousand uh, dollar negative balance um, for all accounts that are in arrears. Um, none of the accounts went up in price. In, you know, increased their negative balance. Um, but this year we were not able to offer all a cart. And so there was no money exchanging hands at all. Next year we'll be adding in the a la carte back into our service. And so um, families who have a negative balance will experience that they won't be able to purchase a la carte unless they bring their balance to um, zero or a, a positive balance. So that balance of the negative, the total negative balance is still at about $10,000 in accounts that are in arrears. Okay. With that, I would seek a motion if there are no other discussion points for the approval of the lunch prices. So I'll move, Mr. Man. Second, Lori Miller Beach. I have a motion by Mr. Emanuel and a second by Ms. Miller Beach. And roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Romans? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. I, for myself, that motion carries 7-0. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve the 21 to 23 working agreement and contract summary. This has been a work in progress between Sheila Gossman, Dan Schroeder, and myself. We've also met with the um, board negotiation team of uh, Chair Wortman. Uh, Secretary Welch and Ryan Ravenhorst. And so I'll just go over the summary with you. Um, what we did is for the hourly employees, we really worked on trying to get their hourly wages to be at a competitive market rate. And so you can see in the green is their starting grid rate wage. So if you're coming in with no experience as an administrative assistant, you would start out at 1585 the first year and then the second year of the agreement would be at 1620. The pink columns are your top grid wage. So that would be the people with the most experience in the district um, at 1960 or 1995. There are 10 steps on the administrative assistant grid. Once you have 10 years of experience, you go off the grid and you get a 4% increase each year with this agreement. So um, if you're at step 12, whatever salary you're at, you'll get a 4% increase for the first year and a 4% increase at the second year. So within the grid, what we tried to do is to get those starting salaries to be substantial enough that people will want to work for the school district. And then throughout the grid, we tried to make sure that there were um, enough increases to keep people with us for retention purposes. Um, the average increase for support staff um, in this grid is uh, about uh, 4% on any one step. Um, some are a little bit higher, some are a little bit lower, but it is about that 4% number. For the salaried support staff, that would be um, any, any salaried employee that is not a building principal. So it's primarily the rest of the district leadership team. Their average increase is 3.98 in the first year and 2.85 in the second year, and that's inclusive of salary and benefits. I should mention that for any working agreement that we talked about here, there are 13 or 14 of them. None of them received an increase in insurance because our health insurance costs are going down both years. And so the district contribution is not going to decrease. It'll stay where it is but the employee will see the savings. Um, nearly every employee on our insurance plan pays something out of pocket every month for the premium. That amount that they pay out of pocket will go down. We did some other minor language changes. 
um, made some small adjustments to the 403B contributions. Um, the most of the um, resources that we had available, we tried to put into uh, starting wages for those hourly people so that we can attract um, employees that um, would fill positions that we have available. Um, I spoke about the health insurance already. Um, for sick leave, we did not have grandchild. Uh, we do have employees that are raising grandchildren. And so we wanted to, if you have a grandchild that is in your home or that you're caring for, that you would be able to take sick leave if they're not able um, to send them to school or daycare. Um, in bereavement leave, we, for some reason, have never had in-laws listed in their bereavement leave. And so if you have an in-law pass away while you're employed with us and you need to take time to be with your family, you can use bereavement leave for that. All groups for life insurance were um, put at the $50,000 coverage. We had some that were at $10,000 and others that were at that 50,000. So all groups are now at 50,000. 403B, we increased the match for all groups um, in a small amount, it wasn't substantial. And then longevity, we had some groups that were missing the 25 plus years, um, getting a thousand dollar payment for um, being in the district for 25 plus years. So just for the groups that were missing that step or that uh, part of the longevity grid, we added that to make sure that all of them are treated equally. Does anybody have any questions on the information on the summary? No, but I, I want to thank uh, you and uh, Mr. Schroeder for doing the work uh, to put these numbers together. I know it wasn't easy. I know it's important, though, uh, for, like you said, the retention piece for those, you know, the schools don't run without these positions. And mm -hmm. uh, we uh, need to keep the great people that we have. So this is a piece. Piece of it. So thank you for doing all that work. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I'm, just, I'm just really hoping that this puts the district in a position to like maybe get to pick who they hire. Mm -hmm. right? You know, rather than just hiring who's available. You know, I'm just I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. This you know, but we'll see what happens. But it would be yeah. really nice for our team to be able to like choose who they hire rather than taking whatever able body is. Position. Yeah. And that's been the intent of the district all along that we always hire better than we are so that we can continue to become, you know, become the best and, and continually improve. Um, this year for some of these hourly positions, we had positions posted for the entire year that could not be filled. Um, people that were scheduled for interviews that could not show up. People that interviewed well and were offered positions that didn't come to work on their first day. And so uh, we we're just trying to make it palatable or make it attractive to work with the school district. So um, that's part of the what, what we worked on with that that green column in getting these to be um, to be more attractive than they had been. Okay. I do want to echo what Mr. Welch had said, along with adding in uh, Miss uh, Sheila Gossman. Um, yeah. She she had done a lot of work as well, um, and just making sure that everyone is treated equally and fairly, and uh, the retention is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. So thank you again. If there are no questions or other discussion points, I would seek a motion for the approval of the 21 to 23 working agreement and contract summary. I'll make the motion, Lori Miller Beach. I'll second, Ms. O'Neill. All right, I have a motion by Ms. Miller Beach and a second by Ms. O'Neill. And I'll do a roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Romans? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7 0. Next on the agenda is to consider and approve the dissolution of the cooperative sponsorship of girls hockey beginning with the 21-22 school year. I can speak to this. Um, Rochester Lords is the host for this co-op and they did not um, have, I'm having feedback, 
Um, they did not have any um, students to field the team. And so as a result, um, Dover Yoda has already voted to withdraw from the co-op. Uh, Rochester Luritz, who is the host, has already voted to dissolve the co-op. Uh, we are the third component of the co-op. And so um, this is just the board approving that dissolution. It does not affect the boys hockey team. Uh, we will still continue to have that co-op. Um, we have three girls that are uh, members of this team and no one in the pipeline. So no one in the youth hockey program um, that attends our school. So the prospects of continuing the co-op do not look like we could field the team. So it is recommended that the board just dissolve the cooperative sponsorship. Are we looking at like Mayo or JM or anybody else to for those girls that so they have an opportunity to still play? So those opportunities have been explored and we have not had um, anybody express an interest in par partnering with Stewartville to create a new co-op. We previously had an agreement with JM before this, is that correct? I don't recall that. Um, no, it was somebody else. I don't recall that. It's a male, okay. One of those. All right. Any other questions? All right. If not, I would seek a motion for the approval of the dissolution of the cooperative. Simple. Have a motion by Mr. Welch. Second. I have a second by Mr. Romans. All right. And Roll call vote starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach. Aye. Ms. O'Neill. Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst. Aye. Mr. Romans. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7 0. Next on the agenda is board committee updates. So I do have an update for a couple of these. Um, the facilities, um, the board facilities committee, after our visit with SiteLogic at our last board meeting, have requested a more in-depth study of what they're recommending. So we have a workshop scheduled for July 15th, and we'll spend about three hours with SiteLogic, uh, the district, and we'll have Ehlers there, our financial advisor, to walk through the scenarios make sure that what's included in the scenarios is what we think is um, most important. And then Ehlers will help us see a more clear financial picture for what the scenarios would look like. And then we'll bring from that meeting to the July 26th board meeting, a final solid recommendation for moving forward. So on the facilities committee is Mr. Welch, Mr. Ravenhorst and Mr. Romans and they should have received a, a calendar invite from me for that, July 15th. Then also negotiations, we are meeting on July 19th and we'll begin um, discussions again about where we wanna be going with negotiations. We'll have a better idea of what the legislative actions will be and the financial picture that that paints for us as we start to discuss um, the negotiations package for the teachers. Anything for policy? No, um, we haven't dove and dive back into that. It's still on our, um, it's on the back burner, probably one of the furthest back. So um, Alicia and I are talking about how we're going to regenerate that and get that going. Sounds good. Um, any other committees? I uh, did uh, attend virtually an Infinity Online Governing Board mm. meeting. Yeah. Um, here it was probably a, we scheduled one a couple weeks ago. Um, and Ms. Selfers, I don't believe you were in attendance in that one. Is that correct? I was not. Um, so just a brief recap. Um, they they talked about enrollment and how the COVID year affected uh, them, um, which they they were down about twenty percent enrollment, which um, obviously affects their income, but they also had less expenses. So. Um, 
this is, I don't know our participation with Infinity um, as far as the number of students that take courses with them. Uh, but they do have, this year they had one of their higher completion rates for their courses, which they were really proud of. It was over 93% of the students completed the courses that they um, signed up for, I guess you could say. Um, they talked about going forward, because there's now there's a lot more mm -hmm. um, entities or schools or whatever you want to call them, offering online schools. So I think sure. long term, um, they're positioned pretty well uh, with their the teachers that they have and the courses that they have. And obviously, they've been around for a long time. So I think they're going to be maintain um, strength with their position. And some of the newer places will, you know, obviously, it will be new for them. So they may or may not struggle with those online providers or providing online courses. But there are about 30 or so um, schools, I guess you could say, over this next year become our um, proposing to be online providers. So there's a lot of lot more people coming to the table with this. Mm -hmm. uh, so tuition rates are going up slightly, but they do annually. Um, but we are a member, so we do get discounted tuition. So mm -hmm. that's uh, kind of what I got from the meeting that we have there. Okay. And Belinda, do you, do you uh, know by chance what kind of participation we have with Infinity with students? This year it was down because we offered the flex option for our students who might want have wanted an online option. So our Infinity participation did go down. Um, the sure. students who participated in Infinity courses were one courses that we didn't offer. And so right. um, which is why we why we're members, because we want our students to have access to opportunities and maybe we can't provide them so then they can go through Infinity to get those. So um, that's but overall, kind of like yeah. Overall, participation from our students enrolling in Infinity courses did go down a bit. Um, and as I said, the ones that participated were participating in courses that we don't offer. I would I would suspect that would rebound to some degree this next calendar our school year. Yeah, it may. Um, we don't have a real good idea yet of what that impact right. will be. Um, we've approved additional days for our high school counselors to visit with students who are flex to make sure that we are creating opportunities that they want to engage in for the coming school year and making sure that they're enrolled in something so that they can continue to work towards graduation. Very good. Um, Zed Governing Board, um, we had groundbreaking a couple of weeks ago for the new building um, and the project is well underway um in Casson. Um extended school year is well underway as well. And um I also don't know if um any of you know um Zed actually has never had a scholarship program. Mm -hmm. And there is a company, a consulting company that actually brought forward and donated money to start up a scholarship fund for this year for the seniors and there was um scholarships awarded after they're graduated from that yeah so our alc what that looks like for them so it's a little different route in what that looks like instead of academics but um it was uh pretty cool to see so and that's all i have for zed Okay, I'll move forward with the superintendent update. Um, end of year update. Um, just so proud of our students and our staff completed a very challenging year. Um, their efforts and hard work just made it a success all the way around. On June 4th, we recognized nine retirees and 17 staff for their years of service. Um, their total years was 450 that they've dedicated to the school district. So amazing talent and um, dedication and commitment from those staff. We conferred 135 diplomas on June 6th, and we wish all of our seniors the best for their futures. Um, Tiger Time, they did an amazing job of transitioning all of their equipment, supplies, 
and program essentials in three days from Bear Cave and Bonner over to Central and successfully opened on June 10th. This was an amazing accomplishment because as they were moving in, our custodial and maintenance crew was moving second grade out. And so the elevator was in high use and uh, there was a lot of people trying to get in and out of doors and equipment and furniture. It was a massive accomplishment. So kudos to all of those people and how hard they worked. And if you remember, it was hot during that time. So um, a lot of sweat equity literally went into that. Um, we also reconfigured some office moves to and from third and fourth floor at Central. Um, Kathy Conger and registration is back down in her former office. Uh, Greg Hale will have an office next door to her so that we can use the space that he was using for instruction. And then we also will have Rick Vandaloo, who is our instructional coach on that floor. Um, upstairs on fourth floor, we'll, um, we moved the special ed office to uh, where Kathy was because there'll be three of them in there with Courtney uh, Galing joining us. And then Katie Morlock will be upstairs as well. She moved out of Bear Cave. So a lot of transitions, but they are all done. And uh, we've got everybody in place and all the furniture has been taken care of. So a lot of work went into that and, and we, the crews did an amazing job of getting that done. Um, end of year updates again, Haley Liffrig, Tim Malone, and Kurt Hughes worked on our summer preparedness plan. This is required by the Minnesota Department of Health and MDE that we have this. Summer programming opens successfully on June 14th. It's fully operational. Our summer food service program started operation on June 14th. Tiger Time students and all children under the age of 18 can have free breakfast and lunch throughout the summer at Central. The list, district leadership team collaborated to develop our safe return to learning plan. This had to be up and running by June 21st. Um, the, plan, the plan was successfully posted before the deadline on our COVID-19 link webpage. Um, and just finally, we're so proud of our staff and their commitment to their, their work and their desire to be better in meaningful ways for our students, our families, each other, and our school district. Um, all throughout the year, I really do believe that we thought we could do this and we did it. And so um, it was a challenging year, but in the end through resiliency and dedication and commitment, we made it work. So just so proud of everybody and how hard they worked to make this happen. For our enrollment update, what I have for you is May 15th, we had 2,075 students. On June 1st, at the end of the school year, we had 2,076. I did include the open enrollment cap and how many students are open enrolled throughout the district. So we have a total of 432 at the end of the last school year that are open enrolled into the district. Um, you can see that some of the um, enrollments are beyond the cap and that's primarily due to sibling preference that we offer. And so um, when you have one child come in and then they have a sibling that enters um, in that grade level as a kindergartner, it may boost that cap. Um, projections for next year, uh, we're looking at a total of 2102. Um, you can see the caps um, that we put in place. And at this point, I don't believe that we have any, oh, we have a couple of grade levels that are over the cap. It's going to be the eighth grade and the sixth grade, but that is just a continuation from the previous year. Remember that we had a, a long discussion about the kindergarten and that cap being at 50. Our kindergarten enrollment is quite a bit lower than we anticipated at 137. Um, we only have 39 open enrollments. We were projecting 50 at that when we approved that. Um, five of those rescinded their open enrollment application. And then another five are waiting another year. So they're going to keep their kindergartner at home and come um, the following year. And then one that we're still um, working on getting confirmation from. So because of that, we originally thought that we would need eight sections of kindergarten. We will only have seven. And so that changed the landscape um, and it just cha it changes our enrollment overall. Um, enrolled from this school year of those 20 of those homeschool families, we have 20 of those students coming back, six students coming back from an online vendor that was not through us. 11 students that are coming from Rochester who had left the district and then other Minnesota districts, um, we have six. 
withdrawing from our school district. Uh, seven are going to Rochester and seven are going to other school districts for various reasons. So that's where we are projecting. This is not solid. This is very fluid. It changes every day, but it just gives you a sense of where we are as of the 24th. Linda, yes. with, when do you have to have all your hiring done? If the, like say the kindergarten class increases, what, what's the, what in your mind is the deadline for when you need to have a teacher hired or what, or moved around accordingly then? Um, mid July would be ideal. Um, we're not anticipating anything taking place there. Um, Kathy Conger does an excellent job with child find and making sure that we know who the kids are that live in our district that are eligible for kindergarten and connecting with those families. Um, it would have to be a pretty massive increase of open enrollment to move us into a place where we need another teacher. Um, so mid July would be ideally the last date that we look at hiring just because uh, we want to make sure we get the best talent that is available. Um, but there has been hires that have been made in August just because of things that happen. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be my that would be pushing my comfort zone if we went beyond mid July. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have, Chair Wortman. Very good. Any other questions for Ms. Selfers? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Selfers. Mm -hmm. All right. Last on the agenda is adjournment. So moved, Ms. O'Neill. Second, Mr. Emanuel. I have a motion by Ms. O'Neill, second by Mr. Emanuel. Roll call vote, starting with Mr. Emanuel. Aye. Ms. Miller Beach? Aye. Ms. O'Neill? Aye. Mr. Ravenhorst? Aye. Mr. Roman? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. Aye for myself. That motion carries 7 to 0, and it is 8 12. Have a great night.